right, Canucks versus Wild, game three, play in review for August 6th. Now, Vancouver wins this one, three to nothing. Vancouver now takes a 2 1 series lead over the Wild. They won the last two games. Now, when it came to changes in the lineup, um, there were three for Vancouver. Furlan and Toffoli are injured. Toffoli has been seen um, around in a walking boot. Thanks to my friend Ryan for that insight. Furland, they haven't said, but it looks like he's feeling symptoms from the concussion. Why did you fight in the first game? Why, after coming back from being out almost all year? I just, all, all I did, I just hope the guy's career isn't over. That's all. It would be a real shame. Uh, Godet was also out for Vancouver in this one. And the replacements um, who were in last game, Vertanen and Eriksson and McEwen, who, if you remember, has a long fight history with uh, Felino from Minnesota. And the first half of the game, at least, <laughs> There was a lot of uh, a lot of spicy uh, entanglements happening between the two. I don't know what spicy entanglement. <laughs> Anyways, to start the game, Roussel takes out Staylock. Now it looked worse than it was, um, but but when you were watching it, you were just like, oh oh my, what's gonna happen now? Of course, that caused a big russet, ruckus. Uh, but we move along, and, and the Wild had most of the chances in this first period, but Vancouver did start to come alive towards the end of the period on a power play. This turned into a, another penalty parade, by the way. At the end of the first, the shots were 10 apiece, but surprisingly, no shots from the 649 line. That's the Canucks' top line of uh, Besser, Pedersen, and Miller. Now, in the second period, there was just more hard forechecking by Minnesota. You just felt like at any moment they were going to score, but it was Vancouver who got on the board first um, on a power play goal from Brock Besser. Yes, that's now his second goal um, of the series. It was a rebound. Uh, have I said that already? <laughs> He hasn't got that lethal shot off yet that we're all still eagerly waiting for. And that was assisted by Pedersen and Hughes. Now the shots at the end of the second were 2019 for Minnesota. And at this point, towards the end of that period, Vancouver took like back-to-back -back penalties. And Minnesota was looking really, really dangerous. Um, and I have a note here that uh, because of uh, Vancouver going on the penalty kill a lot, Sutter, not Suter, Sutter, Actually, looked was having a really good game. Um, he was playing a good 200 foot, 200 foot game. He was just boxing players out from the uh, center of the ice in the defensive zone, and was just key in the face-off win circle. Especially when there was like a couple of two-man advantages that lasted seven to ten seconds, and he got that out of, out of the zone pretty promptly. Now, in the third period here, just over two minutes in, uh, Vancouver makes it two to nothing on a goal from Antoine Roussel, who gets a breakaway, backhands it past Stalock. Um, that was assisted by Hughes and Tanev. Um, and then, a little bit later on, Tyler Myers takes his sixth penalty in the series. A needless one at that, and there will be a lot of those. And not long after he gets out of the box, does Fiala bump Markstrom? And, and shortly after that, just gets obliterated by Sutter, who comes out of nowhere off the screen. Just boom! Into the boards. Huge pileup. Looks like a football game there. Thankfully, nobody was really hurt. And a lot of mayhem and chaos. Or, or chaos and mayhem, if you, you've watched Lethal Weapon 2. Eight minutes into the period at this point, Vancouver just kept on taking needless penalties. Just dumb ones. The whole period just seemed like a, a Minnesota Wild power play to that point. Uh, and then with about 1.30 or so left in the game, um, Vancouver's on the power play again. Hughes makes a sweet pass over to, over to Pedersen on a two-on-one, and it's 3 nothing. <clears throat> and that was assisted by Hughes and Besser. Uh, Pedersen gets a goal on, and an assist in the game, as does Besser. And Hughes with three points! He's still a rookie for crying out loud. First playoff game. He's doing really well. Tana is just a perfect partner for him, too. Now, what, what do the Wild have to do to change things? They've got to score a goal. Five on five is what they've got to do. <laughs> because Fiala can't do it all. He looks like the only consistently dangerous one out there. 
you, you put that together with Markstrom just having a really great game. He controlled his rebounds. And Vancouver, Vancouver's defense, really, especially on the penalty kill, just did a tremendous job. They're blocking a lot of shots. Tanev's butt is probably the same color as his shorts right now. And then and Minnesota needs to adjust their power play. You know, they, they got just as many opportunities, funny enough, but they, they couldn't do anything with it. Uh, remember, they were 11th during the regular season, so it's not they're like they're chopped liver or anything. They got to move some players around or, or do something. Anyways, the box score situation, the shots on net uh, when, as the game finished were 29-27 for the Canucks. The face-off win percentage, surprisingly, uh, the Wild have it 54-46. to Vancouver has taken this last couple of games by over 60%, so that's a little surprising. The power play, Vancouver's 2 for 7. This is the difference here. Uh, the Wild, 0 for 7. The penalty minutes were 22 apiece. Didn't seem like that. The hits, because Vancouver took a lot of back-to-back -back penalties. The hits were 39 to 21 for the Wild. Blocks were 22 to 11 for Vancouver. Giveaways were 9-7 for the Wild. That's not a good stat to be the winner of. Now, when it comes to the goaltenders, Markstrom obviously got the shutout, saved all 27. And Stalock saved 26 to 29 with an 8-9-7 save percentage. His stats aren't looking good. It's about rebounds, I think. He's being screened a lot as well, and the Wild players aren't getting to those those rebounds first. It's it's the Canucks. So maybe he could use a little help from the rest of his team, really. In any case, uh, there you have it. I would love to hear from you uh, Canuck and Wild fans, especially in the comment section down below, what you thought of this game, how it went. And yeah, that's it. That's all. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry I didn't do any game reviews yesterday. I had some health issues, but uh, I'm back. And um, hey, please be kind to each other out there and I'll see you soon.